Welcome back to Monday. If you had a good weekend, that's probably going to be ruined by news that's happening today and everything that's happening today. There's a new virus outbreak in India, which is what we're going to be focusing on at the core center of this video. But also Parliament starts back up today and Justin Trudeau might be here for the first day. He might not be. He's actually scheduled to travel tomorrow, which is weird since he's supposed to be sitting in the house. But, you know, it's Justin Trudeau. He wants to jet around and emit as much carbon emissions as he possibly can before he's forced to inevitably trade in his jet for an electric jet so lots of crazy things are happening also the video i posted yesterday about the truth of the freedom convoy and how it was sabotaged by you know this hate gate and, and breaking the, the the story on that that actually got age restricted and demonetized immediately it's since been reversed but i just want to walk you through kind of the back end of what actually happens here on youtube so right after posting it you can see it got um uh, age restricted 18 plus and monetization means it's limited which means that you, you make no money on it and then you can see how it affects the views right here is getting over 200 views a minute and then it absolutely just tanked and this is me posting on twitter just you know uh, complaining to youtube you can see that they've replied to my tweet here the decision got reversed in 30 minutes but I mean, I just found it very ironic that the shape of the views looks like the liberal logo, which is why I, uh, you know, I want to encourage you to not donate to this channel. I don't, I don't want your free money. I want you to exchange money for something that you actually want. And winter is coming. Home heating is really expensive. So if you want to offset some of those costs, you can do so by visiting the merch link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. My favorite, my all-time favorite is a Canadian Freedom hoodie. I changed the way it looks on the merch shop to be my actual favorite one which is the maroon when you click on it you can customize it to different colors navy white carbon gray black whatever it is that you want so that's my favorite also this hat which i'm wearing right now both of them are my favorite which is why they're at the front of the shop so if you want to support the channel by any means you don't have to do there is a donate donation link down uh in the in the description but buy some merch buy some merch if anything that really helps so let's take a look at this um the story here this is this is very, very frightening. So what, what do you need to know about the deadly Nipah virus as India races to contain outbreak? It's happening again, folks. At first it was COVID. Now it seems like there's other viruses that are also coming from animals. I think this one is allegedly coming from bat. We're going to look at some of the facts here. There's a lot of fact checking in this video. So you're going to want to stay for the entire thing because there's some misinformation circulating online. And I just want to nip everything in the butt here in one video. So health officials in India have uh, shuttered schools, offices, and public transport and are testing hundreds of people in an effort to track and contain an outbreak of Nipah virus virus that has killed two people but can kill as many as three in four people it infects and has been flagged uh, by experts as having the potential to seed a new pandemic so th this is apparently a real thing and they're like hey whoa maybe we cried wolf before and we turned something um, that didn't need to be into this massive you know catastrophe but this is the real deal and to be honest three out of four people is a lot but what like what trust do we have left in the experts and the government and Dr. Fauci and, you know, and these experts that are running the show, none of us seem to trust them anymore. They, why should we, why should we trust the media? Why should we trust the officials? Why should we take this any more seriously than what we did previously? So let's take a look at, you know, the entire story here. Parts of India are now fully locked down according to the, the news here. Authorities in southern India are rushing to manage an outbreak of the deadly Nipah virus. Two people have died. Hundreds are being tested as potential contacts. Salima Shivji is in Mumbai with the details. Officials are on alert and taking precautions in the southern Indian state of Kerala because of this Nipah virus outbreak, particularly in the Koriko district. Some schools are closed, banks as well as well as government offices. Shops are shuttered and the streets are a bit empty. People are a little nervous and not just because of the loss to business, says this shopkeeper. After COVID, now we have this new virus and everything is shut again, he says. The Nipah virus spread through contact with fluids of infected bats, pigs or people is rare but has a Previous outbreaks do paint a scary picture. During the first one five years ago, 21 out of 23 infected people died because of the Nipah virus. 
Now, authorities say that in this case, they are taking every precaution possible. Kerala's health minister says all of the close contacts of those infected are being tracked and they are in isolation. At least 700 people have been uh, confirmed and identified as people who have had some sort of contact with either the victims or those who are infected and they are being tested for this virus. Police are monitoring vehicles at checkpoints and the state has set up containment zones in the district where the infections are clustered. The federal government is also rushing in help, sending in experts to help with monitoring the spread of the virus as well as with contact tracing. While infectious disease specialists are working to study the strain of this virus known to be so deadly with the state on high alert. Salima Shivji, CBC News, Mumbai. So the reason why we're talking about this on this channel, you might be wondering to yourself, hey, Mr. Sunshine, you cover Canadian politics, things that have to do with Justin Trudeau. Why are you covering a Nipah virus? Well, let me just refresh your mind on this question that I assumed you have asked, but may not have actually asked. Justin Trudeau just came from India and his stay there was actually extended beyond what it was supposed to be due to his plane breaking down or all of the different allegations and conspiracies that are involved with that weird situation. He just came from India. Now, India's a huge place. What are the chances that he brought back Nipah? I don't know. We none of us know, but we do know that there seems to be somewhat of an agenda. That's kind of everyone can kind of agree. Hey, man, this is very weird. And what's even weirder on top of this is the other week, uh, Dr. Tam did a press conference and everybody was wearing masks. And there's a real possibility that everyone today in the House of Commons will also be wearing masks. I don't know when this video will actually get published, if it will be before question period starts or after question period. I'm hoping it's right out before because I would like to say to you, if you want to watch question period live, come over to my second channel called House of Canada where I stream every single episode of question period. I call it episodes because it really feels like a sitcom TV show. So the link for that is down in the description. Here's a press conference, a real press conference that happened a few weeks ago. And as you can see, everyone's wearing masks. And I'm under the impression that everyone in the house, at least on the liberal side, will also be wearing masks. This is before the announcement of the Nipah virus outbreak, to my understanding. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Health Canada's authorization of the new Moderna Spikevax COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB 1.5 subvariant. We have authorized this vaccine for people six months of age and older. The vaccine was authorized after an independent and thorough scientific review for safety, efficacy, and quality. And this included a review of data from several studies of the primary series and booster doses of the Spikevax vaccine collected over the past two years. After assessing all the data, we've concluded that there is strong evidence showing that the benefits of this vaccine outweigh the potential risks. Individuals who are five years of age and older should receive one dose of the vaccine, regardless of the COVID-19 vaccination history. And children between six months and four years of age should receive two doses if they have not previously been vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine. And if they have been previously vaccinated with one or more doses, they should receive a single dose. This vaccine is anticipated to provide a robust immune response that will be effective against the Omicron XBB.1.15 variant. From the start of 2023, COVID-19 indicators have been on a decline to historically low levels for a number of months. In the last few weeks, we have started to see an increase in COVID-19 indicators across many areas of the country, including hospitalizations. Here's some good news. Preliminary clinical data have shown promising immune responses from the XBB.1.5 vaccine, the vaccine receiving regulatory authorization today, against various Omicron sublineages, including EG.5 and BA.2.86. This improved immune response is expected to better protect against the strains that are circulating in our communities. If if it has been more than six months since your last dose of COVID-19 vaccine or your last infection, your protection from the virus may have waned. Receiving a COVID-19 vaccine dose this fall with an updated formulation is expected to increase individual protection against infection, symptoms and severe disease. 
So it sounds like they're trying to push these new boosters or these new vaccines. Um, I don't know if anyone is really on board with this. It feels like everyone is fed up. It seems like a lot of people who did get vaccinated, who did get boosters and things like that, really regret it. Um, I just, I don't know if the trust is there anymore. I feel like mainstream media and governments across the world, but let's just focus specifically on Canada. I feel like they've reached um, the all time low for respect from the general public and credibility. I think a lot of people feel that they were strong armed into getting certain um, vaccinations. A lot of people actually were, and they would have been fired if they didn't get their vaccinations. And the government has denied and gaslit millions of Canadians into saying, we're not forcing anyone to get anything, but you are, you're providing an ultimatum. That's forcing someone to do something. So it, it, it's, it's just... It's, we're in this weird spot where even if there were to be some sort of black plague or Spanish flu to go across the world, the people just don't trust the system anymore. They don't trust the media. They don't trust the government. And that's what happens when you cry wolf. That's what happens when you, ha when you have the approach that you did, Canadian government and Canadian media. If there is a real wolf that comes knocking, a real virus that can wipe out and be as dangerous or as, um, you know, uh, influential, I suppose, maybe that's the wrong word, as the Spanish flu and wipe out, you know, like half of the country or half of the world, uh, who's going to believe that? Who wants to mask up? Who wants to lock down? Very few do. I know a lot of people that were on board of the vaccinations, on board of the lockdowns, are now saying, I'm not doing any of that. I'm walking into a grocery store and I'm not wearing a damn mask. And it just, it doesn't help that the credibility of the situation, it doesn't help when you come across tweets like this. This is why it's important to fact check things. No, no, no disrespect to the person who posted this, but as, uh, as if it's his call, the man is a puppet and we've already told you months ago that we're planning another lockdown. So this is a photo of Doug Ford. Right. Ford says Ontario facing another lockdown. Ontario Premier Doug Ford says the province is uh, staring down the barrel of another lockdown on cases uh, surge in Toronto, Peel and York region. And these types of posts, I really don't like. This is from September 17th, 2023. And that's not a recent post. When you Google this. Here's the proof. Refresh the refresh the page. Ford says Ontario facing another lockdown. You Google that, and it's from 2020, 2019, maybe even. The photo and the, the title matches. This is not from 2023. So no Canadian politician has currently said that lockdowns are coming. But Dr. Teresa Tam has done a press conference and this the video that we watched from Teresa Tam uh, is on the National Post's website and that's from September 13th so I assume that the press conference was in and around September 13th or September 12th um, no one has said that masks are coming back the mandates are coming back that lockdowns are coming back to Canada it just seems kind of suspicious that Tam is wearing a mask. We're going to have to see what the federal politicians do during House of Commons and in Parliament. If they're wearing masks, then it's probably an indicator that it is going to be a federal policy soon. We have yet to see Justin Trudeau domestically wear a mask. We don't know if they will do that. I personally suspect that they, they might do that because I feel like another wave of mandates are coming. I just don't know to what extent. And it really doesn't help the world that India is having uh, some sort of outbreak with the Nepo virus, right? It's not, it's not good. Um, the state of the world is, 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 is pretty fragile right now. And I think that this would just mentally push people beyond where they are it would, over the edge. Like I almost want to cry. It's almost enough to make a grown man cry for the government to implement mask mandates and lockdowns again, because I just, I don't personally, I don't, I don't want to do it again. I don't, I feel so stupid. I feel so stupid for wearing a mask. I feel so stupid for complying the way I did personally. 
And it just, it angers me. And I want to be careful because I don't want to use my platform for like some sort of uprising and say, don't comply, don't do this, don't do that. I'm just using my platform to say, I think that people are fed up the way I'm fed up and the way that other people that I talk to in my social circle are fed up. And so I'll use this opportunity right now to pass a question off to you, the audience. Are you fed up? Will you comply? How do you personally feel about the potential of some sort of mandates, some sort of lockdowns or masks coming back. Are you on board with it or are you not? I'd really love to know what you guys think down below in the comments because just it seems like socially, at least through online, when you disregard mainstream media and you just focus on independent creators, independent media, and just, you know, Twitter users and things like that, when you filter through all the bots and all through all the misinformation and disinformation, all the all the trolling and crap, it feels like people are just fed up. And that's why you have hashtags like I will not comply or do not comply trending all the time while you have have some some big creators um, that speak out on this and say I'm not complying. I encourage you not to comply because I think everyone's fed up and just mentally I, I just don't know if we can handle it. I don't know if we could. I don't think I could. I do not personally think that I could mentally handle the government telling me every single day you have to wear a mask, you have to get vaccinated, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, yeah, so I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. That's where we're going to end it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I want to reiterate uh, that if you want to support the channel financially by any means, uh, you can do so by purchasing merch. Link down in the description. It's a better way of getting something for your money aside from just donating, of course. Or if you're going to be a channel member, that's also appreciated. And if you don't want to do any of that, that's fine. Just subscribe, like the video, share it to Facebook, whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thank Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.